we had uh, we we were conscious of the visibility and the traffic for this film in the international markets so it became the first talent uh, anywhere in the world to be uh, taken on by the indian uh, as an indian actor by apple we took him to the um, to london we took him to the apple store on regent uh, street and there was an entire podcast which was put together for him for the first time they put together something called as itunes.com/chris3 which was a microsite created where all other content was also sort of so you were at one stage looking at marketing at the same time looking at monetizing of the content as well other things like a music karaoke app etc which was done uh, and what were the results of something like this uh, the most fascinating result was when we unveiled the trailer uh, the day we unveiled the trailer the second day thor 2 uh, uh, trailer was released and if, for those of you who've seen the thor uh, franchise and the thor 2 trailer it was a fascinating trailer as well uh, on the sixth day krish overtook thor 2 globally this was a marvel release a uh, worldwide release on the seventh day we get a call from google saying uh, we've got something here you know i i don't know what you folks have been doing etc but you know we've got to be able to by the ninth day we'd cross 10 million views as we speak you know it's over 30 million of just that one trailer itself and it's hardly been about 6 weeks uh, since intro so when you do you know some of these coordinated efforts and it doesn't matter if it's done for a big film it could be for a very very small film as well but when you combine your marketing in such a way that it's coordinated you will see an amplified kind of effect uh, that comes around with that uh i'm i'll just give you know an example with something that we are very very proud of and will be launching very soon is is an entire series of games on on a film which is coming across which will be coached then i'm i'm uh ravi i'm let the race begin many a times you you find that uh, a lot of this sort of uh things creates buzz in a certain way and uh, if you see the the creative expression on digital if you were to sort of contemporize it to the way the look and feel happens in a certain way i'm going to play out this last one this is an example of something that we did as an augmented reality uh, case i let the video play out and for you to see what we actually we 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 went across uh, at multiple sort of uh, malls etc and for this film called ferrari ki sawari we put uh, just these bucket seats for kids and for people to come around but the moment you got onto that seat on your screen you saw yourself in an augmented manner as though you were riding a ferrari so i'm going to play this out for you to experience the cast <clears throat> you know people would take pictures of this post it on to social this is what we were doing this is how etc it sort of you know lends itself similar examples i'm i'm just going to skip this past right now and i will move uh, directly into the panel now this really has been my apologies it's a 15 minutes i think my team's gone a little overboard fantastic this is today approach to not just making a movie but marketing and beyond so that really like in a connects user and stickiness and is it more 
Anyway, so uh, thanks Niraj for doing wonderful presentation, which actually made our job really simple here. So panel here is a reshaping mobile entertainment in the era of digital revolution. And just uh, coming from the uh, mostly ex Western experience, I'll tell what you saw here is actually a digital revolution happening on the ground. So we are, it is not something like, you know, happened in far-flung countries and outside India. It's already happening and that's why we are lucky to have a panel like this here. So uh, we just met Neera Joy. I don't think anybody needed an introduction after this. So on my left, we have uh, Rashna Kanwar, who is SVP and business head of uh, digital media and news business from Radio City 91.1 FM. And uh, next to that is uh, from uh, Jay Maru from Shemaru Entertainment. In fact, their family been active in this media business from 1950 or 1960. So from the VHS day, now we are into digital world. So there's a long history and experience there. Then we have Pankaj Kedia, the country for Dolby Laboratories, which is a predominantly heavily involved in standardizing a lot of audio codecs. And beyond that, just now it is also taking to the next level about the UX and UI, I mean, what how kind of like user experience that we want to deliver. So we'll be lucky to have Pankaj. Then we have uh, S. Ramachandran from Acer India Private Limited, which you know, company that does a lot of ultra books, uh, I mean, laptops, as well as uh, tablets and uh, phone, those devices. And uh, we have uh, Vijay Mani from uh, Delight. So technically, if you talk about like in you know, a creation, distribution and consumption, one way or the other, this panel is very well, well balanced. So we can get into introduction, and, uh, but before we do that, we have a couple of minutes that each uh, person will going to explain. And I will start with uh, uh, Rachna here. Um, so I head uh, digital media and new business at Radio City. Uh, we've been active in the digital space since uh, 2008. That's when we uh, launched our website, planetradiocity.com. Uh, we actually recognized at that time that there was a need gap. There were a whole lot of uh, music streaming uh, services and uh, piracy was rampant. Uh, but there wasn't a one-stop destination for music and that's what we uh, uh, tried to create through the website. In 2010, uh, during this period, you know, we were trying to get our, uh, uh, you know, terrestrial product, which is radio, it's a radio network, onto digital, but, you know, due to some uh, regulations and a whole lot of other constraints, we weren't able to do that. So at that point, we decided to, um, you know, replicate that experience and also customize it for the internet audience and uh, we launched web radio in 2010 with a multi-genre uh, radio station. Post that till now, we have launched about six radio stations uh, online. Uh, they are, you know, uh, ranging from independent music, which is called Radio City Freedom, uh, to Radio City Tamil, which we launched recently, which uh, is, you know, going ahead in the uh, language category. You know, we also want to cater to each and every language because Radio is also a very, very local medium and, you know, we want to connect with uh, local yet, you know, we want to give it a, uh, the global reach. So people who enjoy, for example, uh, Radio City in uh, Chennai, they can also listen to it anywhere that they go. And even if they go out of their country, you know, they can enjoy uh, the same experience. Uh, so. Uh, uh, recently, we also launched a, a mobile app. It's called Planet Radio City again. It's available on iOS and uh, the Android platforms. Uh, there again, uh, we have tried to blend both the on-air and the online experience. So we have taken something called Radio City Freedom, which I earlier talked about, um, which has independent music. Um, it's a very interesting feature where live radio is uh, available to you uh, all across the world and uh, you can listen to more than uh, 500 independent artists, uh, again Indian independent artists but from across the world. Apart from that, you can connect with, uh, very soon with the Radio City RJs and uh, a lot of Radio City content is available on it. Um, our flagship properties like Bubble Share, etc. So, uh, 
that's what really we are doing on digital platform. Thank you, Rashna. Uh, Jay, would you like to start? Hi, uh, I'm Jay Maru uh, from Shimaru Entertainment. Um, we've been very fortunate. Uh, I've, uh, you know, we are now a 51-year-old brand. We actually complete 51 years today. Uh, and it's a brand that people have grown up with and recognize uh, uh, wherever we go. And that's really been uh, great for us. When we started, it was just in uh, books and VHS days, and it was just a form of distribution. Um, but from there, the vision really grew uh, to a point where today we are one of the largest content houses where we create, own, and aggregate uh, content across multiple Indian languages, pretty much all the film industries uh, of in all the regions in India, and then make sure that that gets onto every conceivable screen where a consumer would want to consume that content, either ourselves or through partners. Uh, so for example, on TV, we are not a broadcaster, we supply to broadcasters, but on the internet or on DVD, we do it ourselves and we go direct to the consumer. But suffice it to say, the real vision was how do you take this huge mass of content that this wonderful creative industry is producing uh, in large numbers, take that and take it onto every single available device, screen, consumption method, any network, any consumption device, and not just put it blindly there, but transform it in a way that makes sense to that platform. So how do you reshape that content, transform that content, package the right content for the right device, and allow consumers to be able to be entertained whichever device they go on. So uh, simple examples like, if can I you know, go to a theater and watch Bal Ganesh, great. Can I also, I want to see it on mobile and I have only a 2G connection, great. We've got one minute videos. I happen to have a better connection and I happen to have a tablet, great. I have a 15 minute uh, version of the movie. But I also want to see it, uh, you know, uh, the full length stuff and I don't want to go to any physical uh, device, great go see it on the internet and on YouTube and on various other paid platforms. And there are wonderful platforms that are emerging that we are working with to try and reach all those consumers. So really, uh, you know, it gets summed up in our tagline, which is entertainment infinite, because we believe in an infinite number of options of entertainment being delivered to an infinite number of devices and consumers over an infinite number of choices of method. That's us. Thank you, Jay. Now we have Pankaj. Hi, I'm Pankaj Kedia from uh, Dolby Laboratories. And, you know, Dolby for the last uh, 48 years has worked towards uh, enhancing the entertainment experience. You know, whether it was removing the hiss on tape or bringing surround sound to cinema. Uh, and then, you know, after that, bringing that to television broadcast to the home. And now to mobile devices on the go. So that's what we do. And the way we do that is we work across the ecosystem. We work with content creators to help them create content, master content. Uh, then we'll work with the delivery platforms, be it an aggregator, be it a platform, be it an uh, operator, uh, and help deliver that content in a seamless, effective, and timely manner to the consumer. And then finally, working with the device manufacturers to deliver that experience to the consumers. Because what we believe is that, you know, the experience, you know, humans, we, we, we want to be awed, we want to be amazed, we want to be enamored, you know, uh, we want to be entertained. We seek experiences and, you know, I think this is most important when you're watching entertainment content. You know, we want to be lost in the world of the content that we're watching. We want to be part of that world and I think, uh, you know, this picture quality, the audio experience, you know, significantly enhance that experience. And, you know, the same thing is beginning to happen on the mobile devices. Uh, traditionally not known for their, uh, you know, audio-video capabilities, but in the last two years, you would see every manufacturer bringing up, you know, larger screens, better resolution, more cinematic surround sound. And, uh, you know, I think the work now is uh, happening with enabling the entire ecosystem to work with content companies like Shimaru, uh, work with device companies like Acer, to really bring that ecosystem together and, you know, help consumers, you know, get that experience whether they're watching it in a cinema or in their living room or on the go on their mobile devices. So that's what we are focused on. You know, we've had some great success in India in the last few years and we're hoping to you know, work more with our partners in the market here. Thank you. Rajendran. Yeah, good evening. Uh, my name is Rajendran. I'm from Acer. Thanks to Fiki for giving me this opportunity. So 
I come from the computing world, so some of you may be wondering, you know, what is this guy got to do talking about entertainment? But I think the answer lies in that question. Till about three years back, right, entertainment normally meant people going to a movie theater. You have a dark environment, you have a big screen, you have hushed tones, and then you watch an entertainment, right? To put that in perspective, uh, like uh, Neeraj mentioned, maybe there are about 12,000 to 13,000 screens today. And the paradigm shift today is that instead of people going to screens, right, entertainment is coming to screens with the customer and the devices which are enabling this are humongous in number. So when I talk of 12,000 to 13,000 screens for entertainment in the conventional sense, if you slap together the notebook market, which are screens anyway, you, if you look at uh, mobile devices like tablets and smartphones, next year, this number is going to be more than 50 million. You're talking of entertainment, which people went to access in 12,000 real, real brick and mortar world to something like 50 million devices. You know, that's the landscape you have. And that's been a very humbling learning for us at Acer, where from a computing company, we are saying today we need to bring devices where the user experience, right? That's the moment of truth where the user experience for games, I mean, you talk of entertainment which has many genres. It's not just about movies, it's about music, it's about gaming, it's about gambling, it's about online, uh, you know, uh, different formats of entertainment getting uh, consumed. So we need to make that moment of truth so real, so rich, so we partner across the ecosystem, not just, uh, you know, with, with the screen guys to make the touch screen so much better, not with just the battery guy to make the battery last longer, but also with people like Dolby for getting a very enriching oral experience all around. So that's the paradigm change which Acer as a hardware company is going through and we are realizing it's an exciting journey and uh, to keep in tune with these changing times, we also have adopted a tagline saying explore beyond limits. So it applies to us, it applies to customers where we say that we are going to equip you with devices slapped together with a lot of technologies, content, cloud-based uh, service consumption, all and more to help every individual explore beyond limits. That's it, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rajesh. Uh, so thanks a lot. Uh, first of all, let me say how uh, thrilled I am to be part of this panel. It's, it's really a privilege to be part of uh, such an illustrious set of people. Uh, so I thank the organizers, and I also thank my co-panelists for engaging with me. Uh, my name is Vijay Mani. I am from Deloitte. Um, Deloitte, as you may have noted, is the knowledge partner for this event, and we've been knowledge partners for three years now. Um, we do a lot of work uh, in the media sector across the globe. Um, this is both from a market assessment and strategy point of view, uh, as well as from an operational, uh, operations and technology point of view. Um, increasingly, Deloitte is very focused on uh, TMT convergence and has been for several years now. Um, the whole uh, ecosystem is converging to offer uh, compelling value to clients, uh, to customers and subscribers. A and our goal has always been to study what's happening um, in different parts of the world, understand leading practices, uh, and help our clients uh, learn from that and work alongside uh, them to uh, implement, some, implement some of these uh, leading ideas. A few quick words about uh, what we observe in the Indian market. Um, very clearly, uh, you know, there is a significant growth uh, in the internet subscriber base in India, particularly the mobile uh, internet subscriber base. Um, we have about 90 million, uh, roughly, uh, active mobile internet subscribers, about 15 million more fixed wireline um, uh, internet subscribers. Um, and a lot of them are consuming uh, uh, video content. Uh, estimates vary, um, uh, but it's unmistakable. I think all stakeholders agree uh, that there is certainly appetite for consumption. Uh, the $64,000 question is, uh, you know, uh, will subscribers pay for such content? Um, and I suppose only time will tell, uh, but there are a number of positive uh, drivers. Handset costs have been falling. Uh, handsets have been increasing in sophistication and in the level of uh, experience for the customer. Uh, networks are expected to improve. Uh, pricing data plans are, are seeing uh, significant changes to make it more attractive. And we expect to see more and more of these uh, trends going forward. Um, so we watch these trends very um, carefully and uh, you know, 
uh, we hope to work alongside our clients uh, to help understand these trends and then um, uh, you know, really make sense of how this landscape is going to evolve over time, how different stakeholders can come together, um, you know, share their strengths, um, cancel out their weaknesses, uh, and make this really attractive for subscribers going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ravi. Uh, my uh, quick comments on this. I think uh, what in India the mobile economy did for uh, the broader content industry uh, is, uh, is quite fascinating. Uh, right now, what's happening is that there are something like you know, almost a billion paid transactions that take place on a monthly basis. I mean, a company like ours itself uh, would have done a couple of billion of those uh, last year. Uh, these are, you know, for what we describe as digital goods, you know, which is all content, but it's really digital goods which consumers are buying into. And on last count, from about 600 odd million consumers, there were as many as about 200 million who had used their mobile service beyond voice and texting for some form of content consumption. Now to me, this is a very important community which is getting curated and getting a